Welcome to Beholder's Eye, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons epic fantasy adventure. My name is Alex and I'll be your host and Dungeon Master. On the Great Isle, it is a time of religious wars, imperial domination, and an ancient evil reborn. Only one crew can save the world from utter destruction. They are... Magrain Silverbeard, Paladin of St. Delegis. Zalara Tremez, Wandering Elven Monk. Magnar Skorgrim, Goliath Sorcerer. Hibernate, the fire-kindled, wandering flameosopher. All right, who wants to let us know what happened last episode? I think it's my turn. So, last episode, um, Ilde, Ilda, um, Margraine's little sister, came back to life. Woo! Um, after being stabbed terribly in the alleyway. And she talked of being basically one with nature through Shamhara, the the goddess of, of the green grove, I, or no, red leaf grove. There we go. And so that was kind of nice. And Margraine had a nice little time with her. And uh, then Solara went and talked to Magnar and found out that Magnar decided to stay with his wife and kind of had a breakdown and ran over to Margraine and Hibonite and the rest of Margraine's family, staying at the um, Abernathy warehouse, I guess, whatever you want to call that. Um, and they ended up kind of talking her down from like going and trying to get Magnar not to stay with his family. And so then they had a party and ordered in food, basically, I guess, and chilled with the uh, all of the Silverbeards. And then the next day, um, Hibonite decided he would go to the college and didn't want to leave Margraine alone because Margraine alone with his thoughts can sometimes be a very bad thing. So Zalara stayed with Margraine and went for a walk. And we uh, decided that that owlbear situation uh, was, was not good. And so we needed to go save some owlbears. And so um, Margraine and Zalara went down to the uh, box to go figure out where these owlbears were being kept. And then while uh, Hibonite was at the uh, college looking for some information, he ran into this, I'm assuming bard, since he was in the bard section, um, and, and had a nice conversation about how strange the, um, I don't even know all of the things they talked about, but just the, the numbering system, especially with all the bard books, was terrible and nobody can find anything ever. Um, and I, did we even hear his name yet? Nope. Nope. So it's just I mean, some random dude yeah. at this point. And, and so they had their nice little conversation and Margraine and Zalara decided that the best way to get to the owlbears, because it was all a nice enclosed tunnel, would be to get into the ring with them. And Margraine nearly slew one uh, in one shot. And Zolara discovered the door was locked, barred, and not like lock pickable. And so she ended up killing the first owlbear herself with her shortbow. And that's where we ended, I believe. Yes. Yep. And so we'll pick up with the owlbear. Well, smashing her with his claw down on Margraine. Does, does a 23 hit? Uh, I will reaction uh, shield that okay. so that it doesn't. <laughs> and so I know, does a 23 hit the second time or is the the shield still up there? I only get one reaction. Uh, let me see if it's still up. So uh, an invisible barrier magical force appears and protects you. You have plus fives to AC um, against the triggering attack. Including the triggering attack. So it's up. And yeah. it's up for one round. Yep. Okay. So until my turn. Okay. So um, I rolled amazing, especially for an owlbear, and it did nothing. <laughs> All right. The claws uh, come down and bounce off the magical shield, as does the beak, and that's its turn. So we go back around the, the horn to you. What are you doing? Okay. Um. So let's see how this works. Um. So since the other creature that I had hexed, uh, died, I'll use my bonus action to move the hex over to the next owlbear and I'm okay. going to swing at it. Okay. Uh, 22 hits. Yes, it does. 7 bludgeoning damage plus 6 fire damage plus 2 necrotic damage. So, 8. 15 damage total for that yep. hit. And then I'm going to swing again at it. Okay. For, uh, does 19 hit? 19 hits. 8 bludgeoning damage with an additional 1 necrotic damage. 
Yeah. And that's it. Okay. All right. So you schmacky schmack the owl bear. Zalara, it's your turn. I'm going to come over to Margraine and and whisper, hopefully, so that nobody else can hear. Margraine, the the door is barred from the other side. I can't get it open. Um, can you can you smash it down or something or? What am uh, What am I going to smash it down with? I I, with I don't know. Uh, well, well, Your hammer would be better. Okay. Uh, we can't have a full conversation though, guys. No, it's... no. Okay, no. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So with that, I will just um, I'll punch at the bear, I guess, for something to do. Okay. <laughs> Ten minute conversation later. <laughs> Come on. You'll just stand I mean, there until we get talking, but it's right? still six seconds, so yeah. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so I'm <laughs> I'm just gonna do a double attack and a bonus. So that's a nine for the first one, which I clearly missed. So I swing my arm around, and I'm not really paying attention because I'm still trying to talk to Margraine. And then the 21, I come around with my other hand and try to give it an uppercut this time. Okay. Uh, I assume a 21 hits. Yeah, it does. For five bludgeoning. And then I'm going to kick it. Uh, let's do a, a, a roundhouse kick. And that'll be for three bludgeoning if a 22 hits. It does. And then I'm going to move back 25 feet <laughs> since okay. I only used half my movement. Okay, and it will get an attack of opportunity on you. I know. Which I know it has disadvantage against. Yes. So it's uh, 14. Does not hit. Okay, so tries to bite at you and misses. All right. Good. So it is now its turn, and it's not happy with the guy in front of him, and he tries to bite him and misses, and he tries to claw him and misses again, because I'm assuming <laughs> 15 and 13 don't hit you. Nope. Um, all right, it's your turn, Margraine. Okay, so I'm going to use my bonus action this time to do my Hexblade's Curse on it. So now I crit on a 19, and I get the extra damage on top of that. Okay. So I'm going to swing with my Flaming Warhammer again. Does a 20 hit him? It does. Okay, for six bludgeoning damage, okay. plus an addition seven seven fire damage, and okay. three from the Hexblade's Curse, and three from the Hex. And then I'm going to swing at him again if he's still up. He is. Does a critical hit him? Uh, it does. Okay. Oh, crap. So that's eight damage, and roll it again for more, plus an additional seven damage, and the green flame blade is eight, and an additional, oh, no, no flame on that, because it's my second attack. Uh, the hex, though, is doubled, 25. So, um, you smash in the owlbear's head, it ignites on fire, <laughs> it runs around like a giant bear-like chicken with its head cut off. And then falls against the cage, catching on the razor wire there, and dies up against the cage. And in your head, you hear Lenore say, yes, my love, yes. And you feel your knees buckle, and you feel rejuvenated as you stand up. Okay. Margarine, are you are you okay? Yeah, that was just pretty tiring, you know? Things didn't well, go to plan. I wasn't expecting to have to take them. Yeah, that was not good. Can, before they come and get us, can you get to that door? Uh... My stubby little legs. Uh, yeah, you well, can try. Twenty, you're twenty-five feet in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I, I will. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, so now. go try to attack the door. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll try and bash down the door. Sure. <laughs> that's what we were trying to do, right? Oh yeah, yep. no, that's what we were trying to do. <laughs> okay, let's let's bash down the door. I was hoping you forgot about it, honestly. <laughs> so, um, do I attack the door, Alex? Like. How does one do this? I'm going to try yeah, and bash I'll it down. Go with ahead the and say, no, just, I mean, attack it, but it, it just basically roll damage. As long as you don't crit fail, you're going to hit it. Okay, eight, eight damage. It's okay. an eight to try and hit it. So I rolled a two to try and hit it. <laughs> Very nearly a crit fail. Advantage because it can't move. <laughs> okay, and uh, you swing against that, and you hear Rax say, oh, what are, what are you doing? No. Um, no, Albert. Albert. Not people, door. And then we're going to cut back to the <laughs> university. And him and I is speaking with the... Well, Ben, describe how your character's dressed. What, what's he look like? All right, so he looks... He's dressed kind of all in green. Um, kind of fancy, but like dirty fancy. Like he's been on the road. Um, he's an elf. He's got... I don't know what he has because I didn't write anything in. Um, <laughs> so... Wow, I could have sworn I wrote that stuff in. But he's got kind of tan skin, like he's, again, been on the road. Um, he's an elf with uh, kind of, I guess, youngish for an elf. Like, barely above 100, probably. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, and he's... What color is his hair? Oh, God, I don't know. Um, can we not cover that? <laughs> <laughs> he's got brown hair, because brown is awesome. Okay. <laughs> So he's kind of brown all around. Um, except for his green clothes. Except for his green clothes. So, you know. Very and horsey. His, are his clothes robes or are they like, um, traveling so clothes? There are more traveling clothes. Uh, he's got some leather underneath like underneath, like a uh, um, like a green traveling cloak. So some armor leather, not just plain old leather. So. Gotcha. Okay. And he's got a whip by his side. So you're talking, um, Hibonite, you're, you're speaking with this green-clad elf with a whip, um, and you guys were just discussing how politicians can be worse than demons, and he said, well, I'm not really sure that I've met any demons, um, and you were talking about the Devil's Claw. He had mentioned that the planar, informa- uh, planar travel would probably be in the Magic's Library as opposed to the Bards, and that he wasn't familiar with either the Children of Dirt or the Devil's Claw itself. Okay. Um, how did you decipher their numbering system? Just so I can see if there is any mildly useful information in this section of the library. Well, they do have this, uh, I guess, catalog, you could say, that has all these numbers. And if you look through what you're looking for by subject, it will tell you. But I don't know how they came to this conclusion. So there's, there's this little catalog over there to your right. And just like if you're looking for Devil's Claw, I would say look under D. And then pull up a card and it will tell you if they have anything on that subject. I would turn around and walk off to the, the catalog. I'm here for. Um, I kind of just stare at him and like, he is red like a demon. Very interesting. And that's it. it. Was that loud enough for me to hear? Oh, no, that was in my head. So. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you don't find Devil Claw in the, the card catalog. Uh, Children of Dirt at all? Children of Dirt, yes, you do find that. Um, so you you are able to find a, uh, a book on that, and it is definitely more lore-based um, in that it, it reads almost like a fairy tale. Um, it is supposed to be out west of... Uh, in the Western Wildlands, you're not sure the exact location, um, and it's um, it, you're not sure the exact location. They do talk about it being next to uh, their home, being a giant crystal sticking out of the ground next to a shimmering lake, and it says that the people are born from him, the crystal itself, but all seem to possess some kind of magic over the earth. Crystal. The book describes them as demons and, and say they're impossible to fight off and that they've been known to kidnap humans, take them there to assimilate them. Oh, dang, we got to fight the Borg now? You do notice that this this uh, scroll that you're reading does um, predate the Thelmer, or excuse me, the Theos Revolution. So it is fairly racist compared to modern standards. All right, so uh, Hibonite, that's what... You, um, you find out. Um, Garen, are you doing anything about the strange red man as he's there reading the scroll, or what are you doing? No, I think it's just interesting, but um, if I don't really find much on lions in this area, then I guess I need to answer the summons I was given. Yep. Uh, Hibonite, give me a perception roll. Yeah, uh, perception. That is a 20. Okay, you notice um, that you, the uh, elf you were speaking with, he pulls out a letter, looks it over, and on it is the signet seal of the queen herself, and then he gets mm. up and heads for the door. Um, you could do anything about that or not, or if you want to c- continue your research. I mean, Hibernite doesn't really have any reason to, right. so I'm dealing with the queen. Interesting, but not noteworthy. To him. Cool. Um, so, uh, Hibernite, yeah, you, you found that out. <laughs> About ne- uh, next would be the arcane library for planar travel. Okay, as the focus of his studies. As you go to the library, there, this is much more like a library you're comfortable with. It, it's not just ragtag. There aren't people. I mean, it, it seems like people are here to study. Um, you notice it has multi levels. There are those cool ladders that go up and down um, because there are multiple books or multiple levels of books. Um, uh, very organized. The subject, you know, matter goes together. Like when you found the thing on the children of dirt it was next to cheese um, and you realize that the numbering system had more to do with the letters and they created a numerical value that basically just matched the alphabet um because they you know like somebody felt like they had to create a numerical value so in, in this case uh, 
it, it, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, you do quite quickly find a number of books on planar travel. One thing that you start to learn very quickly is it's all speculative. Like the magic lines up and there should be planar travel, but there's no empirical evidence for it that you can find. It's all theoretical magic. Okay, so it's all fr fringe science. Um, I don't think I have any information for any of the other subjects in this area. Um, as you're looking through there, a a uh, gnome comes up to you. He's got a big red bulbous nose, like um, somebody who drinks too much and, and uh, has gin blossoms on it. Um, his eyes are very... He, um, he's got black circles around his eyes, like he's been up all night. And he says, Excuse me, are you one of the people who brought in uh, Mr. Kenneth Pine? Does he look half demon? Yes, yes, that's correct. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, yes, well, um, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Professor, uh, Professor Clyden Yilzoff, um, and I'm, of course, the head of the magics department here at the university. Um, so thank you very much for bringing him in. He is quite the subject, um, and I, I just wanted to thank you personally. Uh, obviously, with uh, you know the rumors that the queen will accept the hand of the emperor um, as his his wife, um, you know a lot of our funding's been cut off, and so we're we're you know people aren't uh, willing to invest so much into the magic uh, college at this point. And uh, with this fine, though, with this fine and um, the threat of um, Mr. Uh, Tot Oman and Marat Hall, this is it, it's been a boon for our college. So thank. Thank you very much. I, I really do appreciate it. Not, not an issue. I'll reach out to shake his hand. Yeah, it was it was it was very great to meet you. Um, I do mean, you know could, any anything about Mister Kenneth Pine above his his I name? Mean, and could, could I come and see the research you did? I did bring in the specimen. I am a little bit of a scholar myself. Um. Well. Yeah. I, you know. You. you I, I don't see that as being a problem. Yes. Yes. Okay. Come follow me, and he leads you through the impressively large library um, to a bookshelf that's a little bit smaller, a little bit more plain. He grabs a book from it, pulls it, and a secret door opens. And secrets. So, yeah. Um. Please. Um. We will just. Uh, if you could follow me, please. I will follow him through the door. All right. So you guys go through the door. Um. You have to hunch down a little bit. It, it seems like this was made maybe by him for him. Um. So it's you know very short and gnomish. Um. You make your way down the steps to a laboratory. Um. It's reminiscent of what you saw in the castle up in the mountains on Falstaff Peak, but it's a little less gloomy. You don't feel as depressed. Um, you do see that uh, the man you now know as Kenneth Pine is laying on a bed. He's not moving, but it looks like he's struggling a little bit, but he can't move. Um, you would deduce very quickly as like a whole person spell on him. And it, uh, he's just saying, please kill me. Kill me. All right. We'll cut back to Rax Who Honey uh, <laughs> extravaganza. Yeehaw. So, you guys are, we're bashing in that door. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Rax was unhappy. So, mm -hmm. now. Hold on, one second. All right. There's three goblins, four orcs, and three hobgoblins in there with you. Mm. Oh, they've all entered the arena now? Mm hmm. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, Rax maybe? says, well, why, why you do this? Oh. I want to kill. What? Why you do this? Well, why, why, why do what? You smash door. <laughs> you try and get to to precious, precious commodity. Uh, you, more more owlbears, right? Yes. Yes. That's what we came to do. What? We came down here to fight owlbears. There's more owlbears in there to fight. The hobgoblin comes up and says, <laughs> "Now that sounds like something of, of of deception to my ears." Sounds like something. They're trying to trick you, Rax. They're trying to trick you. They were trying to get in there. I'm, they I'm going to look at Zalara kind of side-eyed. Like, kind of, you want to get out of here? Okay, I'm going to cast Calm Emotions on the group. Ooh, cool. Um, so, yep. So, it, if they're hostile towards us, I'd like them to be uh, indifferent towards us. Okay. Yeah, uh, they, they have to make a wisdom saving throw, I think. Charisma. Charisma. Uh, 14. Okay. Talara nodded her head, FYI. <laughs> oh, yeah. We can see that, but the audience cannot. Well, the hobgoblin... Hob, blah, blah, blah. The hobgoblin's got a zero. Like that's what he rolled? Yeah. Amazing. Because they have a negative one on charisma. <laughs> All right. So, everyone's like, 
Rex says, oh, why, why, why are we uh, up here? Uh, no, we're, we're, we're very sorry, you know, we, we didn't understand how the, the game worked. We'll, we'll just go. Yeah, okay. cool, Jay. Okay. I don't care. Thank, thank you, Rex. Uh-huh. Let's, let's go, Zalara. Okay. Okay, we'll leave. <laughs> how long does that last? I want it. Uh, that lasts... Up to a minute. Up to one minute. Long enough to get out of there, I would imagine. Yep. Hopefully. Yeah, you guys get out of there, no problem. Um, you start making your way to the the uh, the bridge to get up, and uh, you have to climb rope ladders to get up there because there's no... Obviously, this wasn't built with people actually living there in mine. Mm-hmm. You climb up to the bridge, and as you do, you hear someone behind you yell, Get them! They're thieves! They're, they're, they're thieves! And you see all the group that was standing there come charging after you. Uh, you make so it up the up the bridge, and they stop and look up. And Rack says, "You leave any other levels up and come down. Rex kill you. Uh, Rex kill you." I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that didn't work at all. Yeah, we're making more friends. <laughs> yep. Um. Well, so much for freeing Elvers today. What? Yeah. I'm- I what thought that plan would work. Well, I couldn't take both of them at once. And as soon as you said we we couldn't get through the door, we had to take care of them. Uh, I suppose. Uh, I feel Am bad I supposed now. to just stand there and let them, like, maul me to death? Well, they weren't doing anything to you, so... <laughs> they kept missing. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, they're not gonna miss forever. Well... And the only other way we were getting out of there was either right to die, like the last guys in there, or to take out the owlbears. Uh, I suppose. Anyway, you shot the other one. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I was... I thought... I don't know what I thought. Uh, but Magnar's leaving us. Yeah. <laughs> that... that uh, that's probably why I did that. Uh-huh. So what, what are you two... Where are you two heading now? Um, uh, besides not the bog. <laughs> I don't know. We were going for a walk, so. Yeah. Um, well, I would I would say shopping usually because uh, we need health potions, but I'm fresh out of cash because my sister died. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I am also penniless. Um, so, uh, back you want to go your... find him at night? Or... Uh, I try to find him. At the college? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to talk to Magnar without him. You know, all of us get to say our goodbyes before we go. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you guys head to the university. Uh, Hib and I, you're down there with uh, Clyden and um, Tenneth Pine, and, and Clyden is telling you, So, uh, what, we've, uh, what we're trying to do right now, the research is focused on, is uh, studying his blood. Um, we might be able to reverse the effects... Um, of all the people by taking whatever components are in his blood that make him, as he says, has Hathor's heart as a component and uh, make a uh, some kind of antidote, if you will, and not only stop this uh, warlord, but also save all those people. Okay, I didn't think of that sort of idea. Has he told you much about how the process of turning him into a demon worked? Yes, it, it was very interesting. Um, he talked about uh, some kind of ritual, and uh, from the runes that are written on his chest, um, I mean, it's a language that is very, very old. Uh, it's been found on some um, artifacts and some other uh, runes, ruins, not runes, uh, ruins um, throughout the lands, but very, very old and very hard to read. So it's nothing, we have no, no way of translating it, unfortunately. No translation. Okay, that's not great. Fortunately, I mean, uh, uh, discovered anything else? He said anything interesting? Um, the only thing he said is that um, the uh, the people who were part of this cult, um, they seem to have found uh, a a um, manuscript that was glowing. It was just a, a sheet, and it, the the founder of of the cult um, was a, what he called a scribe, and the scribe apparently ate the sheet and changed and he was the first one to change but he had to perform some kind of ritual and he knows nothing about that did you say where they found the sheet he said he he found it actually while digging they were digging a well and then once he started preaching what he knew um the whole town or or everyone around mr kenneth pine and his relations couldn't help but join oh so they the guy ate the sheet and they all felt compelled to do the ritual as well that's what it sounds like some kind of um compulsion magic correct Okay, that's troubling. Okay, um, 
I, I don't really know if there's anything else to it. I just wanted to see how it was going. I want to make sure the, the find we found whilst traveling was being put to good use. And it sounds like you're doing great work. Well, thank you. Thank you. We think so. The queen thinks so. And uh, so it looks like we'll sh we should have some more money for our coffers. Um, now, if obviously if, if she does end up accepting the emperor's proposal, then, uh, you know, it's, it is a different story at that point. Um, you know, I've always said that that was the case. Then, of course, it's southward I go to uh, to Sol Green. So, um, you know. Yeah, I, I can understand that. If, if you're heading that way, I would recommend taking the Giannis River. Um, it's better than trying to walk across the border. The Honest River, did you say? Giannis. Giannis. Y-A-H-N-I-S. No X? Oh, yeah, I, I mean, obviously Sol Green's not too thrilled with people from Thelmer, so... Well, eh, this is a strange world we live in, and not much is going well at the minute. Indeed, indeed. Um, just a, another question I have. You know the mm. crystals that the city has? Oh, yeah. Is, is there much knowledge on them? Just in my um, travels, I've heard of these demon people. They've gone to different areas to find ancient powers and release mm. them. Yes. I'm just worried for the city about those towers. Well, they've been here um, when... King Kali founded Kalimdor. Um, it was said that he was drawn here by the Crystal Towers. They're extremely ancient from before the world was swallowed, as far as we know. Um, no one's been able to enter them. And those who have tried or tried to climb have been attacked by what they call Crystal Guardians. But nobody really gets that close. That's more legend. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, the king... You know, what he heard in the humming compelled him to build the keep and protect the towers. But that's all lore. I don't know much beyond that. If you wanted to, say, try and enter the towers, where Ooh. would you go? Well, you'd have to get into the keep. I would not recommend it, my friend. That way, you're sure death. If, if the queen doesn't have you killed, the crystal guardians will. And I can't. And that's just outside. I can't imagine what's inside the towers. Sometimes the pursuit of knowledge is worth a little bit of danger. Mm. Well, that's not a little bit of danger. You will die. Imagine the secrets you'll find. If you live. I mean, realistically, the difference between you now and you trying to approach the tower is you would have the same amount of knowledge of the secrets. You'd just be dead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you don't know me. I would also have more knowledge because I would have fought the creatures. So even if I die, I would die with knowledge of how they fight. Yeah, which no one else would have because everyone else is dead who has it. Knowledge on a dead man's lips, no one can hear. Uh, you know, nowadays people die all the time. It's not as much of an issue. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so um, he leads you back up, and um, your your companions end up finding you there in the university. Oh, woohoo! So, so how yeah. goes the research? Um, some good bits of information. My um, I found out that the uh, where is it? Sorry. But from my notes, there's interesting things over at the, uh, the claw. It doesn't sound very safe, but it's mostly speculative. I found a book by Nyx, which was nice to see. Oh, very nice. And um, yeah, and apart from that, the bards here cannot organize books to save their lives. And there's a book about, I think, might be more of my people. Oh, but, okay. Um, it, it's, it's generally pretty old and a, a little bit racist, to be honest. Well, things were like that, you know. And they're, they're trying to use the blood of the guy we brought in to um, make a cure for demon transformation. Oh, interesting. What are they Would trying you... to do? Maybe, like, get the heart of Hathor and put it in everybody? Yeah, they're trying to find out, like, in his blood if there's something in there that prohibits it. So, make, like, we can just inject it into people and they stop or they change back. Oh. I mean, he hasn't changed back yet, so, you know. Ah. Oh, and, um, yeah, the... Did you know that the Queen's apparently meant to be taking the hand of the Emperor? What? Yeah, I, no. The, the the guy I was talking to was really worried because if she does, then you know, magic research here goes kaput. Yeah, well, it becomes I, well, you know, magic becomes the the church's domain. They're the only yeah, ones we've seen how they've handled it. it so far. That we have. Oh, yeah, but I didn't like Mother Caldona very much. Why? Why would she I, marry him? Her I, husband I died I keeping him out. I don't care for politics, but uh, we can ask her next time we see her. But um. <laughs> I did, I did meet this weird wizard fellow as well. He was talking about lions, like big house cats. Big oh. kitties? Yeah, like, I, I, he said they were dangerous. Hmm. Well, well, I'll know to stay cats. away from... He had business with the queen as well, but I didn't really think it was important at the time. Uh-huh. Well, maybe we'll we, see him again. We do have to give the queen our, <laughs> our answer today. We do have to see the queen, so... I mean, it is another <laughs> thing to avoid seeing Margraine as well. No, no Magna. Magna, that's the one. <laughs> 
I don't um, want to see you at the minute, Margaret. I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, you know, Magnar does have to, you know, give her his answer. That's true. I mean, true. We, should, we could go get him and... Yeah, you can't avoid him forever, <laughs> Hibonite. Well, see, you say that, but I'm pretty sure if I leave the city now, there's a very low chance I'll just run into him somewhere else when his child's here. <sighs> I could probably buy 18 years. Once again, your 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 logic is impeccable. I mean, if I go back to my people, I probably won't see him again anyway, because not many people come to see him. Smash That's cut true. to you're inside Vodhava's house. <laughs> Magnar. Damn it. <laughs> um, so, Magnar, Zilara told us of your plan, you know? Yes. I, I do not think I can abandon Ilva and Vodhava at this time. That makes sense. Not that I ever would. Yes, I, I know. Um, that makes perfect sense, you know? You have to be here to protect them. Uh, I, I get that. But we're, we're, we're here because, you know, the, the queen does need answers from all of us. And if you're not going to be going, then, you know, thought we'd be with you and we'd give her our answers as well. Those are, by the way, what, what was our answers for the queen? <laughs> I mean, I've done a lot of research on going there, but it is to do, like, fight Marat Hall, which isn't going to be safe. So I'm going to say we haven't come to an answer. Okay. Um, I well would then. like to go to the Wildlands first if we can. I don't think there'll be any kind of gate out there that we need to open with Cavalian's Key. Yeah. I mean, we could head towards getting the Cavalian's Key in Soul Green. I mean, the the guy in the college was telling me about a safer way into Soul Green and the border. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, they they don't like us in Soul Green, though. No. You say that like it's different to anywhere else we go. <laughs> uh, once again, your logic is impeccable. But at least in the uh. Wildlands, it can guide us through the forest. That's true. Well, I'm sure we'll have it figured out by the time we get there. It's a bit of a walk. Smash cut, you're in front of the... <laughs> that works. <laughs> you're now in front of the queen. What's your answer? <laughs> no, no that's, that, that was my plan. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, we will cut to you guys in front of the queen, standing there. Um, well, actually, you guys head to the throne room. Um, as you do, Adeline Renard comes up again. She's being, uh, you notice she has once again a bodyguard next to her. Um, this one is somebody you all four recognize. He's a tall half orc, and you've seen him in Durnholm. Oh, uh -huh. Durnholm? He's the guy who let you guys out. Yeah. Yeah. Of the prison. Oh. Oh. Can we right. see his yeah. tattoo currently? <laughs> no. Okay. N nope, not at all. But um, she comes up and says, oh, it's great to see you all again. Um, I know that Her Majesty is is waiting for you. Um, Zalara, when you're done in, in there, I would love to have a quick audience with you, if you don't mind. <laughs> Absolutely. I, right. I have questions. Wonderful. And yes, as do I. Safe travels to you all um, if I don't see you. Um, but yes, and she tells you where she will be in the palace, and she a, a little room off to the side. So okay, why does she need to speak to Zalara? She looks very familiar to me. She may yeah, be somebody uh, I knew in a previous time. When we okay. were coming at the palace last time, she cast a message to Zalara. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so you guys walk into the throne room. Queen Alanya is sitting there. Vodhava's on one side of her, Tohava's on the other. You also see a, well, a, a half, a, or excuse me, an elf that you recognize, Hibonite, standing there up on a, a, a dais. And um, yeah, you guys make your way in. The queen says, thank you all for taking time to consider my proposition. As I've said, in this time, I feel I have very few allies. So from what I've gathered from Vodhava, it sounds like you have accepted my proposition, yes? <laughs> well, three of us have, I think. I have. Well, if I you're cannot. going, I'll go. And you? Um, I have interest in the area, so I'm going. Wonderful. Yes, yes, Magnar. Vodhava has told me of your decision, and I must say that it is a brave choice to stay with your daughter. In that, Vodhava has recommended this gentleman here, uh, um, someone who she knew from her past, and um, apparently her old minstrel friend knew quite well. Uh, this is Garen, and um, he will be traveling with you. Uh, Garen is a master of the arcane, as I understand. Is that correct? That is correct, your majesty. Yes, so he will be traveling with you. Um, now, we will have to make sure you are all well taken care of. Um, we will, of course, give you all a stipend of 300 gold apiece. 
and I have negotiated with the church to get you all um, three potions of health. Oh, oh, that's very generous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for uh-huh. receiving all of this now, I assume. So, uh, she has footmen bring you all this now. Okay. I know this will be a dangerous journey for you all, and I wish you the best of luck. Do you have any other questions for me? <sighs> uh, I have one small question, just something I overheard while at the colleges, and it's just they seem quite worried, so I thought I'd just make sure you're aware of the worries at the Magic College. Apparently you're taking the hand of the Emperor. She tenses her jaw a little bit and says... <laughs> It is an option on the table. Emperor Simon has extended his hand to me. It is not an option that I wish to take. That being said, I must put my kingdom first. If you all succeed, that will help me make the right decision and the decision I want. All right, sounds like we're on the same page. I just wanted to get an answer, as it were. Yes. I apologize for being so abrupt with it. It's all right. I, 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 find, I, I often find surprising people with questions gets you a more truthful answer. We don't need to know your methodology. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just being kind and explaining how, why I said it. So, the three of you, um, Margraine, Magnar, Hibonite, Brahma would like to speak with you. Oh, fun. He, he is right outside of the throne room, or should be about now. So he would like to discuss things with you. And uh, Zalara, I believe you have a friend who would like to speak with you as well. You are oh. all dismissed. Is oh. there a back door? Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you ensure our safety from Brommel and his yes actions? Okay. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay. okay, that sounds okay. good. Thank you. Uh, all right. So you all go. Brommel is standing there. He looks at you. You can see the hatred in his eye. He says, "Follow me." Or we can have our off. chat in public. If it's safe. I'd rather for not. Everyone. I'd rather not. It is not a public matter. You will be safe. The queen has given her orders, and I have made my vow to her. He leads you to a room. Uh, looks like it may be used for war, kind of a war room, planning, that sort of thing. Please take a seat. He sits himself. I'll take a seat. Yeah, same here. I'll take a seat. I've been a soldier my whole life. I've devoted myself to my king, then to my queen, to my country. Never have I had time for a family, for anyone that I cared for. Soldiering was everything I knew. My time in Paragon as a soldier with the Emperor. My time there, it's when I met her. It's when I met Anastasia. And for the first time, someone loved me and I was devoted to someone above and beyond. Why did you take her from me? We did not kill Anastasia. The Red Hand killed her. She uh, is dead because of your actions. No, she's dead because your men went into town and burned a load of people alive. We left town by that point. My men had nothing to do with that. They were killed as well. Again, the Red Hand killed her. Yes. Burned her and Blevin alive. We had nothing to do with that. Actually, we killed the ones responsible for it. Although one of them may have come back. I have no love for the Red Hand. Nothing but contempt. I hate them as much as I hate you. As of now, we are allies, and I wanted to let you know. I serve my queen first. Thank you. And my vengeance is done. That is very honorable. Honor, duty. That's all. That is all. (sighs) Yeah. All right. So, Zalara, you're in a room that's much less dark. Plush. Chairs. You're sitting across from Adeline Renard. She offers you some wine. Uh, please. Thank you. So, Zalara. Adeline? Adeline is my name now and has been for a while. I believe you know me as this. And she waves her hands and her ears come back to the elvish shape. Her cheekbones raise a little bit and there's no question that it's Tamika. Tamika! How how are you alive? Well, you see, they... when we were children, do you remember that solstice yeah when we yes the heart tree when we went to the heart tree you remember how happy we were after we looked into that heart how ecstatic we were that was the best summer yeah years later before you and i met up in eowyr i was traveling with lang i was traveling with a dwarf a few halflings and and this man from the west called kavalian Mm -hmm. yes Yes, he had some grand ideas of saving the world, saving the universe. Mm. And he still had that love in my heart for all. and wanted nothing more than to save everything we could. 
we opened a gate to a place we shouldn't have opened. Oh, uh, the chaos and I stared room. And, yes, I stared in there, and I saw nothing but pain, horror, no order, nothing made sense, and it was stronger than anything we ever saw mm. in the tree that day. I froze. Kavalyan and the halflings, they disappeared. They were pulled apart. The dwarf woman ran with the, the child. Lang and I left immediately. And yeah. From that point, I realized that hope and happiness was a delusion. All that mattered was what happened in this life. And our lives, even as elves, are relatively short. So I must do everything I could to gain power in this world. So I... I let them know in Castle Delacro that we were coming. I let them know we were about to rob them. You'll notice <gasps> I fell first. The wizard who attacked me, it was just a show. I saw you, but you were on the... You, 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 you were dead in front of me. I, I appeared dead, but it gave me the power I needed to move where I needed to in the in the guilds. I, I took your ashes to get the trust. home. We, we buried you. I, you took the I ashes was, of I was someone kicked, home. I was kicked out because of your actions. I can't go home because of you. And I'm very sorry for that. I, I truly am. I want you to know that on some level I still love you. And I will do what I can to help you. I just, it's been years. I wanted to be honest with you about that. With who I am. I'm sure you heard of the Sapphire Road. Yeah. I am she. And we'll call the episode there. Fuck, man. Thanks for listening to episode 49 of Beholder's Eye strained relationship but roses i know i had a lot of fun with this episode and i hope you guys did as well if you enjoy what we do please leave us a review on apple podcast stitcher google play or whatever podcast app you use it helps us out so so much it's like money but more valuable if you leave us a five-star review we will read it on the air be sure to check us out on twitter at beholders ipod and our website beholders icast um, you can follow Ryan, who plays Hibernite, at Duff Duff the Third. Ben, who plays Garen, at Miro4D2. Cam, who plays Lara, at Mets Girl. And Sam, who plays Margraine, at Samsalot007. Editing performed by Sam Canary. Music was arranged by Benjamin Floyd. And uh, effects editing weren't done by him. Um, but were done by Sam Canary. Thanks, Sam. Because Benjamin Floyd decided to drive a motorcycle and uh, got into a car wreck because uh, he drove a motorcycle. Which wouldn't have happened had he drove a big person car. Get over your midlife crisis, Ben. Your older brother freaked the fuck out when I heard you were in the emergency room. You fucking dick. I love you. Don't be stupid. <sighs> Thanks. And we'll see you next week. A music by Incompetech. Moonlight Hall, Crowd Hammer, Teller of Tales, Folk Round, Heartbeat, Almost Enough, Ossuary 6, Air, Curse of the Scarab, and Our Journey Begins by Kicking the Cloud. All from Incompetech.com. License under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 Licenses. CreativeCommons.org. All sound effects by zapsblatt.com. Seriously, if you're driving a motorcycle, you're just being an asshole to your family. Ugh. Get off a motorcycle. Get a big person car. People who love you are worried.